Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Diana Haskell and I am Associate Principal Clarinet with the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. It is very good to perform here and be part of the festivities. I want to thank Buffet Crampon for sponsoring me to play today and also many thanks to the leaders at Woodwind Fest for allowing me the privilege to perform. I'd like to thank also my friends, soprano Christine Brewer, pianist Ala Voska Bonakova, cellist Bjorn Ronheim, recording engineer Paul Henrik, and Jazz St. Louis for the use of their facilities. I'm very grateful for their involvement. Today, I will showcase works by two female composers and one African American composer. I begin tonight with two pieces by Israeli American composer Ava Wasserman Margolis. Ms. Wasserman Margolis was born in the Florida Keys and now resides in Israel. She has several recordings to her name and she has taught extensively. She is also a remarkable composer with her compositions heard in many places around the world. Ms. Wasserman Margolis is passionate about music, life, and students. I have enjoyed getting to know Ava these past few months. Today, I will play Ava's piece called Ode to Odessa and also her new work called The Whispering Child, in that order and back to back. Here is what Ms. Wasserman Margolis has to say about her work Ode to Odessa. Ode to Odessa was written in honor of Mr. Kaleo Muhlberg, who was a clarinet professor in Odessa. He was of great support to me in my early years of professional life. Out of respect for him, I wrote this piece. When I was younger, I thought my great loves were Brahms, Beethoven, and Bach. However, as I started to listen to more Prokofiev, Shostakovich, and other Russian masters, I realized where my heart belonged. Ode to Odessa showcases several of these Russian composers. Eva continues and says, Ode to Odessa for me is like an opera with many moods and feelings in a very short amount of time. The secret to achieving its worth is one's imagination. This goes for the audience as well as the performer. You either love it or hate it. There is no in between. However, no matter what, this piece does get a reaction and I have never seen a bored person in the audience. It mood change, moods change too quickly. I have of course studied music theory. However, my works are built on inspiration and unconscious knowledge from a source above me. I never know what I'm going to write. The next piece is called Whispering Child and it's subtitled, They Whisper But We Do Not Hear. This is a world premiere of a new work by Ava Wasserman Margolis. Ava says, my inspiration in my later years is about the child. It is about compassion for them, so they will have compassion for you and me. It's about having compassion for the world around us with rules to follow so that mankind won't get lost. Compassion is built on caring for one another. And this sweet little piece uh, speaks really to the child's heart. There are some folk mel melodies involved, and it's just a really sweet, wonderful piece. I hope you enjoy Ode to Odessa and The Whispering Child.
David Nathaniel Baker was born in 1931 and died in 2016. He was an American jazz composer, conductor, and musician from Indianapolis, Indiana, and he was professor of jazz studies at Indiana University Jacobs School of Music. He is best known as founder of the jazz studies program at Indiana University, but his vast skills encompass many areas. From 1991 to 2012, he was conductor, musical and artistic director for the Smithsonian Jazz Masterworks Orchestra. He has more than 65 recordings, 70 books, and over 400 articles to his credit. He received the James Smithson Medal from the Smithsonian Institution, an American Jazz Masters Award, and many, many more. David Baker had to reinvent himself a few times during his life. He uh, was playing with many major jazz groups, including Quincy Jones, uh, in the 1950s as a trombonist. And he was in a terrible car accident, uh, and nobody noticed that his jaw was broken. It was very difficult for him to find a hospital that would take him because he's African American. And so after he left the hospital, uh, they fixed his collarbone, he tried to play again on a uh, trombone, but just could not and had to stop. They finally figured out what the issue was, and he reinvented himself and became a cellist, a jazz cellist. Uh, in a sense, he reinvented himself again when he began the jazz department at Indiana University. A brilliant, brilliant man. His beautiful and frankly, sometimes thorny and complicated musical style combines classical and jazz elements. Uh, it is called third stream music, which is a combination of Western art music and various ethnic musics. This work that we are gonna to play today, the duo for clarinet and cello, is in three movements. Each movement has several contrasting sections. In this duo, you will hear elements of spirituals, blues, swing, some Bach, a two-part canon, and uh, you know some counterpoint. Um, the Ronan Chamber Ensemble commissioned this work, and uh, that is, includes David Bellman, who's the uh, principal clarinetist of Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. Uh, his wife, Ingrid, is a cellist, and she uh, commissioned this work. She knew David Baker from her time working with Jano Starker at Indiana University. It was first performed in 1988. It's not often performed, and so we thought we would bring this unique and wonderful, thorny duet to you today. Thank you very much.
clarinetist and composer, Stephanie Berg, resides in St. Louis with her husband and their new baby. Stephanie holds a master's degree and bachelor of music degree from University of Missouri in Columbia. She is a clarinetist. In 2012, she was selected as a resident composer of the Mizzou International Composers Festival, where her piece, Ravish and Mayhem, was premiered by the group Alarm Will Sound. This work was also performed on a subscription concert by the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra with David Robertson conducting, and it has also been selected for performance in 2016 by the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra. I asked Stephanie to write a piece for me because I feel that we need more rep for clarinet, voice, and piano. It is a lovely combination. I asked for a piece that would stand alone very, very well on a recital program, but might be useful in sacred settings as well. Stephanie delivered, and here are her words about writing this piece. When I was writing three prayers, I knew it needed to be a special piece. To honor someone's faith is to honor a very personal and integral part of that person. I felt this music would have to come from a similar place for, in me. I wrote it with all the love, beauty, and sensitivity I could muster. It marked a bit of a different direction for me compositionally. Most of my music at that point was big and bombastic. So I relished the opportunity to explore something quieter and more intimate. As such, this piece holds a special place in my heart, particularly in these uncertain times. I can't say that it's alleviated my anxiety in the face of a global pandemic, but it's been there, quietly running through my head like a letter from years ago me with messages like, do not fear, I am with you. It's particularly haunting. I hope that you enjoy uh, this piece in three movements entitled Three Pair Prayers by Stephanie Burke. <laughs>